For now, let's bring in Drew Silva and Nick Costas to help us break down what's going on in the world of baseball. Let's begin in the, the NL East, obviously getting a lot of headlines with the New York Mets, New York Mets specifically, Atlanta Braves now with injuries happening to Duval. So we'll see kind of how this division plays out. But Nick, I'll start with you because you do live in New York. I know you're a Yankees fan, but I want to talk about the Mets for a second. You know, being in New York, following the NL East and baseball as you do with betting, what's kind of the vibe and how are you reading the New York Mets right now? Well, I, I can tell you that you know, any weekend where the Red Sox lose by a combined like 7,000 <laughs> runs, great weekend to be a, a fan of the New York Yankees who take two of three, of course, from the, uh, from the Baltimore Orioles. But I can tell you that uh, much like my anxiety is growing um, as we approach October as a Yankees fan. The collective anxiety of Mets fans is is swelling as well. And, you know, we had last week on You Better You Bet, we had on Odyssey Sports Major League Baseball insider, our good friend John Heyman, who also writes for the New York Post. Um, and he basically like, I'll believe Jacob DeGrom's back when I see it, that DeGrom's going to be back in a Mets uniform this year. Now, he's not reporting that DeGrom's not going to pitch this year. That wasn't what he was saying. But I think his kind of, his attitude kind of reflects what a lot of Mets fans are feeling right now. Mets fans are obviously really locked into their team. New York, obviously. Obviously, a fantastic baseball town. And like, there's a lot of mystery and like it's shrouded in secrecy. Like, when is DeGrom going to be back? When's his next reha rehab start going to be? Like, what's the shoulder soreness he's dealing with right now? And I think because of that, you know, the Mets right now, I'm, I'm looking right now at the points bet odds and at Bet Rivers, mm -hmm. it's pretty similar. Um, the Mets minus 150, Braves plus 105. I think these two teams are like pretty equal. If DeGrom's not going to come back, I think there's a case to be made. The Braves are probably better and the Braves have certainly played better since, uh, since May began here. So I think basically, like, whichever team is playing, Plus money is worth taking a shot on here. And the longer we go without Jacob deGrom coming back, and again, it's not that I think he's definitely not going to come back, but like you start to be like, hey, like what's actually happening here? So if the Mets were plus 105, I would say, hey, let's take a shot on the New York Mets here. I really think it's basically like whatever team is plus money is the team probably to look at here. I don't think there's a lot separating the teams, despite the fact the Mets currently hold a two and a half game lead atop the NL East. Yeah, I mean, I think frankly, like the Mets, Fans probably thought that the collapse was coming sooner and more aggressively than it has. So maybe they're playing. Oh, I think you're wrong about money. that. I think Mets fans are conditioned <laughs> that this is going to be like, you know, like, like with the Marlins in 2007 and the Phillies and in 2009, what we saw in that time period here. With okay, Tom let me reframe that. The the I thought the Mex Mets collapse was coming more, more quickly <laughs> than it has. So I, you know, maybe they're playing with house money in my mind right now. Uh, Drew Silva, do you have a read or any inside sources that tell you DeGrom is actually on the radar this season? And does that, does that, uh, uh, you know, ultimately make a plus EV bet on the Braves at, at plus 105. I mean, you hope that what he's dealing with is just routine soreness. Like he made three minor league rehab starts and they were all very successful. He looked like Jacob deGrom. He was hitting triple digits with his fastball. And then he feels a little achiness in that shoulder, which scares you. But he threw a side session the other day. He's supposed to maybe go out on a minor league rehab assignment again sometime this week to restart that thing. And and push toward a return to Queens. I don't really have a good read on the situation. I don't think the Mets really have a good read on the situation. They've slow played this the entire year. Um, they're hoping this doesn't become a significant setback. Um, I'm kind of dancing around uh, the question because I have no clue. Like, um, I, I hope that he, if he makes it back and they have DeGrom and Scherzer in the rotation for the first time, this is this could be a better team in the second half than it was in the first half. And they had one of the best first halves they've ever had in franchise history. It was their best record before the all-star break since 1986, when they won their last world series. Um, I kind of agree with Nick that you probably just want to take the, the plus odds on this. Uh, the team that has the plus odds feels like the better bet because it's, it's, it's really close. And I mean, so much is dependent on the trade deadline too. And, and that's another level. Well, that's of what I was going to actually yeah. follow up with you, Drew. I am curious as you talk about, you know, Jacob DeGrom and, and what they'll do, whether it's adding relievers or a DH or whatever we're hearing from the New York Mets and the Braves now probably have to make a trade too, because Adam Duvall season ending surgery and a few players kind of struggling like some in the league right now on the Braves pretty side. Pretty good so, last year at the trade deadline. The exactly. The so trades. there's certain teams and I think the Mets are one and the Braves are another team that aren't afraid to go out and take on big contracts or whatever have you. So is this kind of a sit and wait and see who both the Braves and Mets add at the trade deadline or would either of you guys feel inclined to get involved now well the mets are not scared to spend money under steve cohen we know mm -hmm. that so they would m maybe be more inclined to go after juan soto i mean they've been mentioned in the running there i don't know if they have the minor league pieces to get it done when compared to like the padres and the cardinals and the dodgers uh but that's the juan soto factor is, is huge here too i would expect the mets to do more at the deadline just because they've been so aggressive 
under this new ownership. The Braves probably need more pieces, though. They need another starting pitcher, too. Like, Ian Anderson has been pretty awful, which, you know, it stinks because he had such a promising start to his career. Uh, Spencer Strider might run into some workload issues. Charlie Morton's not getting any younger. I think they need a starting pitcher and they need an outfielder. And I wonder if they're going to be able to get impactful players in both of those spots. No, very, very shame, fair point. shame about Ian Anderson. I absolutely loved him as the front Me man too. in, uh, in, in Jethro too. Tull. Um, but yeah. as concerns like the Juan Soto thing, like I, I'm actually, I want to talk about him when we talk about the NL Central of the St. Louis Cardinals. I think that's interesting. And just as like the Mets are concerned, you know, I think it's probable. I, like I said, I'd rather take a shot on the Braves here and plus money to win the division and finish with more regular season wins. If DeGrom comes back and is good to go in like the final week of the regular season and the Braves still win the NL East, like I think the Mets are still more likely to win the World Series if they yep. have those two guys than the Braves would be. Or maybe like, honestly, I, I take the Mets to win the NL pennant at... I don't care what seed they are in the playoffs if they have those two guys at the front of the rotation. So for the Mets, like it's it's not about winning the National League East. It's about having those two guys healthy and a, a competent manager. Also, if you're the Braves, you have a clear path to the playoffs via the wild card at this point. You're not, you know, the 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 fabric is a little different you know, in terms of priorities. Plus you have, you're the reigning world champions. Like the idea that you're going to give up all of your future assets to try to win a division this year is a little yep, uh, soft, right? So yeah, there's a, there may be a Braves perfectly comfortable heading in as a wild card to try to, uh, to try to defend their title.